In this movie, I'll show you how to get started with Corona from scratch. I'm assuming that you've already downloaded Corona and you've installed it on your machine. Now, I installed mine in the applications directory of my machine. You may have installed yours somewhere else. Just find the install and from there we'll go. Now, I make a habit of renaming the install folder for each of my Corona builds. I'm using Corona Build 2189, and so my folder is Corona.2189. Yours will probably be called Corona SDK. Know that you can rename the root level folder of Corona without any negative consequences. So now I'll double click on this folder and I'm taken to its contents. And I'm always going to be using the Corona simulator along with the Corona terminal. And in order for that to happen, I'm going to double click Corona terminal and that launches the Corona terminal and it also launches the Corona simulator program. With that open, I'll choose new project. Now I'll create a new app. I'll call this my first app and I'll choose the blank template. We'll be developing for phone. I'll choose the phone preset and let's leave the width and height alone for now. Actually, we'll eventually just be developing for iPhone 5 dimensions, which has a bit different height, but for now we'll just leave it alone. And then I'll choose the upright orientation. Sideways is also known as landscape. Choose next. And now I'll choose a place to put this project. I'll put it on the desktop and choose create. And what happens is a folder is created that has all of the files that I need in order to edit. Now I'll choose show in finder. And this shows me where the project is on my computer. And in Windows, there is an equivalent. It will show you where it is within the Windows Explorer. Now I'll double click the folder. And within it, I see that there are all of these files that have been created for my project. Now for the majority of this course, a bunch of these files aren't necessary. And so in the project files, I've deleted them so that there aren't too many files in order to confuse us. And those are all of the icon files. Eventually you will need these files when you're building for a device, but know that right now I highlight them all and then I delete them because we don't need them for most of the course. I'll just move those to trash. Towards the end of the course, I show you how to create those files from scratch. There are three main files to our project, the build.settings file, the config.lua file, and the main.lua file. We'll start editing our project by editing the main.lua file. So in order to do this, I'm not gonna double click because I'm not gonna assume that you already have Lua files set to open with your favorite text editor. Instead, I'll head to my applications folder and I'll find Sublime Text. So now I'll double click Sublime Text 2, and this opens my text editor. And when it is fully open, the menu appears at the top and there's a new window. Heading to the finder again, I'll close the applications window. Let me close this Corona window, create a new finder window, and head to the desktop. And now I'll drag the folder into the Sublime Text window. And what that does is that creates a sidebar at the left. And I can use this menu tree to look at the different files. It might be that your particular project is also showing graphics files, such as GIFs and PNGs and JPEGs and all of that. I have my settings for Sublime Text set to not show those files. And you can look online how to do that. You would just search for how not to show JPEGs in Sublime Text. You'll find it eventually. So I can select each of these files and it will bring those files to the fore. But if I double click them, it'll create a tab at the top. So now I have a tab for each of these. Most of the time we're going to be working within main.lua. There's one thing I want to show you really quick that we'll come back to later. And that is within config.lua, there is this height equals 480. That's how you would change the height to iPhone 5 screen dimensions, or you would change the width and height to iPad by setting the width and height here within config.lua. I won't change it. I'll just close the file by closing the tab. And now within main.lua, this is where I would write my code. So the question is, how does this hook up to the simulator? Well, let's go to the simulator. So within Corona Simulator, I'll head to File, Open, then the Desktop, and I'll open my folder, and I will not choose a file. Just open the folder, then choose Open, and that opens the project in the Corona Simulator. Let's write some code really quickly. I'll create some text, so local myTXT equals display dot new text. And for the first argument within a string, hello world. And for the next two arguments, just zero. And for the fourth argument, we'll do native dot system font. And for the last argument, the size of 24. Now I'm going through this quickly. 
but know that I do go through how to create new text later in the course. Now, with that, I will position it my txt dot x equals 100, my txt dot y equals 100. Save that, head to the simulator. Within the simulator, the project's open. I'll choose File, Relaunch. So with that, there's our text. I can go back. And being a boy from Virginia, I can say, hello, y'all. And there's the change. Again, I refresh or relaunch. Chances are that your simulator is automatically relaunching when the file changes. I have disabled that. The way I've done that is through Corona Simulator and Preferences. At the bottom, you'll see Relaunch Simulator when Project is Modified, and I choose Never. There are some additional options here you can look into, but for me, the most important one is the Relaunch Simulator option. So because I've disabled it, I need to manually relaunch, which is to go to File and Relaunch. Now, if you make a mistake, let's say I did display that NW text. Save it and relaunch, which is Command R for the Mac or Control R for PC. You're going to get a runtime error. This is how Corona tells you that something is wrong. We'll handle errors as they come up throughout the course. But here you can choose to relaunch again, and you would only do that if you edit the code again. You would choose to continue, which would just leave it in this hung state. If I relaunch again, you can also choose to edit the code and that will launch the main.lua file in your editor. I most of the time choose continue and then edit the code, go back to the simulator and relaunch, command R or control R, and there it is. And so with that, we've gotten started really quickly with Corona. We have one line and we've already got text to the screen. Maybe that seems like, oh, big deal, it's just one line, but actually it is a pretty big deal. If we were developing this in iOS or Android natively, it would take a lot more than one line just to get this much on the screen. And that's the power of Corona. It affords you the ability to get started really quickly and get some meaningful results without having to go through the muck and the mire of configuring all of the mechanical components to get something to display on the screen. And with that, we're ready to get going by learning Corona.